My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people want to make friends. I'm just trying to help you save some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach you, and explain days like today. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. When you have runaway inflation, All aboard! a cycle that you can't believe, you know the Fed's going to step in to try to stop it. And when inflation is speeding so fast that it smashes through every barrier the Fed has set up, that means we're looking at a huge amount of havoc in the stock market because the Fed only has one tool at its disposal that can cool down the economy, raising interest rates. They raise the cost of borrowing money, and it always has a chilling effect on business. But it hasn't yet. Today, the market got just completely obliterated. Dow plunging 630 points, has to be plummeting 2.8%. NASDAQ nosediving 3.8%. <laughs> Because we got a flaming hot non-farm payroll report that made it clear the runaway inflation train is still going full speed ahead. These numbers flew in the face of everything the Fed has already done, and they've done a lot. j Powell's hit us with three triple rate hikes in a row, yet the September unemployment rate this morning dropped, dropped from 3.7% to 3.5%. Now, that should be good, but we know we're not in that environment. We had the labor sector in squawk on the street this morning, and even he seemed unenthused because of the consequences of inflation from these numbers and what the Fed has to do to rein it in. We all know why, because ultra-low unemployment means the Federal Reserve has no choice. They have to find a way to derail the runaway inflation train, and that means mandating a series of rapid-fire rate hikes. This time, maybe even we're talking, some are saying about 100 basis points, not just 75. And the two-year Treasury seems to indicate, well, what? we're in the soup again. Every time we get seemingly positive economic data, you have to remember that it's terrible because it gives the Fed more reason to bring on the pain. The house of pain. Good news is indeed bad news. And this employment number was great news, so the inverse is in play. And that means the hawks are right and more rate hikes are easily assured and justified. Then and only then will it become too expensive to get a mortgage or expand a business or hire new people. And that's when this Fed-mandated torture session will finally come to an end. Of course, we need to anticipate it, but today's numbers made it too hard to anticipate. Today, frankly, was just a charnel house of selling, precipitated by the employment number and then exacerbated by a hideous shortfall from AMD, a very reliable semiconductor company that I talk about a lot. The AMD pre-announcement was particularly unnerving because they did everything they could to please clients with the latest and greatest chips. Unfortunately, those chips aren't needed anymore because we are full up in this country with PCs, at least for the moment, and AMD didn't see it coming. But I might ask, who did? I can't blame AMD. It was impossible to know how quickly their business would fall off post-pandemic when all the home offices were built and people are returning to the office. That's the issue with this moment. There is so much that is just plain unknowable. Where did all the workers go? How could demand just stop for some goods and be insatiable for others? Why do higher interest rates not dissuade spending? How could the labor market stay this strong when so many businesses are starting to struggle? We just don't know. On days like today, we simply know that the Fed's going to hit us with substantially number of rate hikes. So we're taking our medicine ahead of the illness, and boy, does it taste horrible. No, I don't expect an emergency rate hike, although I admit that after today it would be easy to justify. The inflation hawks from the Fed just got a ton of ammunition, and they're going to use it. So why don't we start with our game plan with exactly this issue? You know, we have talks from two major Fed officials, Lael Brainerd and Charles Evans, on Monday. And I've got to tell you, historically, Brainerd's been one of the most dovish members of the Open Market Committee. But now you have to expect her and Evans to outhawk each other, if only to keep pace with Loretta Master, who speaks on Tuesday. Master, the Cleveland Fed president, is willing to destroy the economy in order to save it. She's the one who said she'll keep raising rates even into a recession. Much harder to say she's wrong after today's numbers. She got the ammo. 
and she has the mic. I expect her to be merciless. Maybe she should be. Of course, there's always the possibility this is the last red-hot employment number, in which case the Fed's tightening into an abyss and the damage could be catastrophic. Well, if that's truly the case, then perhaps this producer price index number will help us, or maybe the consumer price index numbers. These are the two big numbers for the week. They could send us a signal that the train is running out of fuel when we see them on Wednesday and Thursday, respectively. And that means you don't need to blow them up to save them. But as with everything else in this crazy moment, who the heck knows? Soft numbers mean it is not too late to catch our collective breath, but we haven't had any. At least earnings at season is about to begin, and we get back to looking at companies. Uh, it, and it's going to allow us to get a handle on what things might still be in the control of corporate executives. I don't mean to put too much pressure on the great Ramon LaGuardia, the CEO of PepsiCo, but it will be terrific to hear him come out Wednesday morning and say, you know what? Our raw costs are coming down so we can hold the line on pricing and give you some great returns. That would cause this $161 stock to jump 2 or 3% while busting some of the gloom, the shroud of negativity that smothers the bulls in their pens before they can even get into the ring. And we know what happens there. Thursday, we hear from a plethora of companies that are supposed to have shortfalls. Taiwan Semi, Delta Airlines, Walgreens, even Domino's Pizza, all of which have been downgraded and mutilated to oblivion of late, which means Wall Street's prepped for disappointment. Then again, I thought AMD was prepped for disappointment, too, with the stock down nearly 100 points from its high as of last night's close. But after the company pre-announced its weak results, the stock plunged another 14%. I was wrong. It's important to admit when you're wrong just as when you're right. Taiwan Semi, the world's number one chip manufacturer, has to be worried about AMD's shortfall. Delta's got to be concerned about the newfound rise in oil prices. Domino's doesn't even have enough workers to expand, and Walgreens just can't seem to shoot straight. They have got to stop the pilfering. They don't have enough staff to be able to open the lock and key shelves that we're all now familiar with and dread and would rather go to Amazon for. The prospective star of the week might be, might be the CEO of BlackRock, Larry Fink. We have to hear what he says about this moment because he's smart, he's level-headed, he's trustworthy, and he's tirelessly working to be better than the others to get it right. I bet his company is navigating this moment well. I'd be a buyer. Friday, we have some other companies that could offer some surprises. Uh, the big banks. We've got Wells Fargo. Okay, that's a gigantic position, as well as Morgan Stanley for our uh, the the charitable trust. Why? Well, because we think that banks, uh, whether it be Morgan Stanley, which is a superb asset gatherer, or Wells Fargo, which doesn't have a lot of capital risk, can do terrifically. They'll take your deposits. They'll make money off them. J.P. Morgan does everything, everywhere. Same thing. Banks are tricky, all right? While rates hikes instantly make them more profitable, they also tend to get hit hard in recession thanks to people who can't pay back their loans. But with employment still red hot, it's entirely possible that the banks can make a killing here without much risk of bad loans. Now, we own Morgan Stanley and Wells Fargo for the trust, as I mentioned. Although it seems like a nightmare to own any stocks when the Fed's tightening and aggressively, aggressively, this is one industry that can actually do better with higher rates. Club members will know that we will give total breakdowns of every single one of these. I think there'll be better breakdowns than you're going to get from anyone on Wall Street. But then again, I am biased because I help write them. Now, we also get results from the best of the, uh, the uh, health insurer, which is United Health. Uh, this one's been a machine that almost never misses. I prefer Humana now for the trust. UNH is a little rich for me, but I don't think UNH will let us down. That said, because the stock hasn't come in much, it might pull back on anything less than a perfect quarter. Now, I want you to think about this. The real pain in this market has been in technology, and the worst areas of tech are PC and gaming. Unfortunately, these are very large subsectors. When will AMD and NVIDIA come back? I was asked that all week. Is it time to dig into the non-PC tech stocks or maybe the down-and-out retailers or the beaten-up industrials? After this week, no, no. After these last two days, I have to tell you, it, it is too early to make a judgment. Anybody who bought at the beginning of the week, and by the way, the market actually was up for the week, felt they were doing great until today. So let me give you the bottom line. If you own stocks, you must know the Fed is indeed your enemy and you are fighting it. You are fighting them tooth and nail. This economy is a runaway train. It smashed through the Fed's blockades today. So now they may just blow up the tracks, derail the whole darn thing. When they detonate... 
It'll be safe to buy. Until then, I am urging you not to be a hero. Let's go to Debine in California. Debine. Hey, Jim. Big Booyah. This is Debine from California. Oh, thank you so much. Big Booyah, right back to you from Jimmy Chill. What's up? Hey, I've been a longtime follower of your show. I must tell you, you're doing a great job in investment education for <laughs> thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, my question is to you is about a semiconductor stock. Recently having a lot of announcement about the design wins in pipeline in automotive and promising growth beyond 5G. But still the stock is trading low. Is it undervalued and what should we take position on it? What's the growth expected? Yes, I'm talking about Qualcomm. All right. Qualcomm is owned by our travel trust. We own it in part. We have too many semis, and I've been saying that. Jeff Marks and I were batting that around. We just have too many, even though we cut them back big. And Qualcomm's got tremendous 5G, and it's also got great auto. And it only sells at 10 times earnings, but it has not been able to hold these levels. I am a believer in Qualcomm, but it could be 10 down and 30 up. Uh, it is down very badly in the last month, but I do not want to quit on it because it's just plain too inexpensive, and thank you for those kind words. We need them. Robert in Maryland. Robert. Hey, Jim. Uh, Long-time viewer, first-time caller. Um, you've taught me a lot about the market. Maybe you could shed some light on gold. I've always been advised that gold is a good hedge against inflation. It seems to me like if you look at the last six months, there's been lots of inflation, but gold prices have fallen. I've got a position in Barrick and GLD, and they're down around 30 percent in the last six months. Yeah, Robert, it's a great quandary to a lot of people. Another thing that's not working right, many things are not working right in this market, is that gold has not reacted well to runaway inflation. Is gold finished? I still think that gold has been a tremendous store of value over multiple years versus, say, uh, Bitcoin. But that said, it has failed so far in its ability to do that. That means that rate hikes are overwhelming gold itself. It won't always be that way, but it is right now. If you own stocks at this moment, the Fed is indeed your enemy. The economy is a runaway train. The Fed may have to blow up the tracks, derail the whole thing. And when they detonate, after that, it could be safe to buy unless we have some softer numbers. And then you don't have to worry about being a hero. Oh, man, money tonight. Hertz has electrified its strategy. I'm hearing more about how the car rental company is connecting customers to the vehicles they crave. Then in the fact the the fact of a volatile week, we have to play MI Diversified, and I'm going to see if I can help your portfolio handle whatever this market throws at it. And Levi's got hit after earnings. I didn't think the numbers were that bad. Should investors try the apparel company on for sale, even though uh, I've got to tell you, the dividend's good, the balance sheet's getting better? I, 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 I see a lot to like, so stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.